For many of us, scleral lenses have become a major part of our contact lens practices. Many others are looking for a good place to start. Like most things, knowing where to start can be the biggest challenge, but after that hurdle is crossed, the rest of the journey is smooth sailing. The first step is to call your local laboratory and ask them for information about their scleral lens designs, as well as what training resources they offer. If you don't currently work with the laboratory, call several and ask about their policies and lens designs, and then select one that you feel most comfortable working with. As you determine what design to work with, size often comes into consideration. Scleral lenses come in a range of sizes, and understanding their classification is important. Corneoscleral lenses rest partly on the cornea and partly on the sclera. Scleral lenses rest entirely on the sclera. Mini scleral lenses are up to 6 mm greater than the horizontal visible iris diameter. Large scleral lenses are more than 6 mm larger than the horizontal visible iris diameter. Which size and design you select depends on the type of patients you're fitting and your preference. You may want to choose a lab that offers more than one size of scleral lens design to offer versatility. After considering these lens categories, you're ready to select a design and order a fitting set. Once you have selected your first patient to fit, you'll want to place the lens on the eye. There are several methods to select your first diagnostic lens, and your lab will guide you towards the best method for their design. Three typical selection methods are used and can vary by lab. The radius of the cornea method, the sagittal depth of the cornea method, and the middle of the fit set method. The corneal radius or base curve method requires you to take keratometry readings or identify the steepest K reading of the patient's topography. The fitting guide will then direct your first lens selection using these measurements. The second method incorporates the height or depth of the cornea. By using OCT or topography with reference to a set corneal cord length, the sagittal depth of the cornea is determined. The fitting guide incorporates this depth with an additional tear film depth for the first trial lens selection. With the third method, you select a lens typically from the middle of the fitting set and evaluate what it looks like in order to guide you on the selection of your next diagnostic lens. One of three things will happen with this first lens. You'll either have too much sagittal depth, not enough, or your lens will fit appropriately. If needed, based on what you see, select another lens to achieve a more optimal fit. Refer to additional educational videos on fit-boston.com for how to optimize your lens fits. Ultimately, we refer back to three key principles when fitting scleral lenses. Obtain a central corneal clearance between 150 to 300 micrometers. Obtain clearance of the limbal area and ensure that the lens edge is not impinging or compressing the conjunctiva and underlying sclera. If you follow the steps outlined here and utilize your lab's training resources, you'll be able to successfully bring scleral lenses into your practice and provide new vision options for your patients. Thank you for joining us.